the breadboard is a component that's very useful in sort of hobbyist electronics or home electronics like we're doing here, and it even creeps into a lot of educational uh, settings for electronics. I have three examples of breadboards here. You see they come in all different shapes and sizes. They're sort of these heavy plastic things here with a bunch of holes in them, and it turns out that the size of these holes here sort of matches the size of the wires and a lot of common components. Like, for instance, here's a resistor that we've used in some other uh, videos here, and you see that they just fit nice and securely right into these holes here. And once they're in, they're very sturdy, like they don't come out or anything like that. And so the breadboard is a way of assembling or holding your electrical devices uh, in a very convenient manner. And it's, they're very flexible. You can just pull the devices back out and put it back in and reconfigure things. And there's a few breadboards here. You can see this one, obviously, circuits have been taken off of this here. But there's a bunch of wires here that used to wire something in here. There's a few resistors stuck in. Uh, but by and large, you like to start a project with a nice, clean breadboard like this. And, and indeed, in this sequence here, we'll do a lot of work with sort of these uh, small half-height breadboards here that you can get for about $5. They're very valuable. So let me just describe uh, briefly how these breadboards sort of work, the interconnect. So it turns out that all these holes you see here uh, have a particular electrical connection. So for instance, these columns that go down like this, these columns here, are all interconnected on one column. So for instance, this column here, this hole here in this column is connected to this hole, is connected to this hole, is connected to this hole, and is connected to this hole. So all five of these holes are connected, but adjacent columns are not connected. So while this column is all one big interconnect, this column is not connected to it at all. So for instance, suppose we were coming here wiring up a circuit here. If I stuck this end of the resistor in there and the other end is doing something, we're not really building a real circuit right now, if I connected the two resistors like this, they would not be connected right now because they're sort of in these two different columns right here. But if I took the resistor out and put it in this column here, so even though it's not really adjacent to this wire here, they're all in the same column, so these two resistors here would be electrically connected because their ends are all in the same column right here. So that's sort of how the columns work. And this gap here is like a big divider in the column, so where this column is all connected right here. That interconnection stops at the gap right here. And as you continue down in the breadboard this way, this column is not connected to this one right here. So what I mean by that is say I put a resistor in here and it was sort of going right there. And I put another resistor over here, like I did before. These two are connected because they're in the same column. But if I took this resistor out and put it over here, although it's in the same column, it's on the other side of this gap. So these two resistors are not connected. So that sort of uh, idea like that sort of describes the whole main face of the breadboard, the interconnections on this main face here. So all of these columns are connected. This column is all interconnected. This column is all interconnected. But they're not adjacent columns are not interconnected. And any given column's interconnectedness or connectedness sort of breaks at this gap right here. So that's sort of how the breadboard works and why it's so useful. And whenever you use one, I'd always like to recommend starting it sort of like this, not like this, because you might start getting confused about what the columns are and stuff. So I always like to start using them like this. The rows at the top are slightly different here then. For instance, this top row here is all connected to it itself, but it's not connected to the, the, the long row just below it here. So if I put a resistor in here and another resistor in here, these two resistors would be electro electrically connected because they're all in the same upper row, as would two resistors like this. But if I took this resistor and put it on the very lower row like this, now the resistors are no longer connected because this one is sort of on the lower row than this one. They're on two different rows, so they're not connected. But if, then if I move this one down to the second row, then suddenly the resistors would be electrically connected again. And what I mean by electrical connection is it's literally like I took the two resistors and pinched the two leads together like this. That's the exact same electrical configuration as if this pinching right here is exactly the same as if the resistors were stuck in the breadboard like that. Now, why these uh, upper rows are sort of useful, and keep in mind you have pairs of these rows, you have rows similar to in similar interconnectedness down here as well, is usually for power. So say we're building a circuit and we wanted to power it with a single battery. I could take that 9-volt battery clip that we were talking about in an earlier video here, and I could sort of push the red into there and the black into there. And of course, I could connect a 9-volt battery to this. And when I did do that then, if it was the 9-volt battery, which it would be in this case here, I would get 9 volts all the way across this row right here, and this would be 0 volts or ground, which we'll talk about in a later lecture, all the way along this bottom row right here. So see, by sort of exploiting these long rows here, it makes it very easy to find places to tap in to get power, say, in different parts of the circuit. Like if you were working over here, you just tap in nearby. You wouldn't have to, say, run a wire all the way over here or all the way to some power supply really far away. So that's what's useful about these upper rows. So in a nutshell, that's how a breadboard interconnection works.